There we go. This is a rather large black opal. And it has um, color through about half of it. It starts there and comes all the way over to here and goes across about half the stone. Huh? So when I cut it, I will take this part off and give it a bottom and then this part look at this i i personally oh, think that the wood part is stunningly beautiful look at that look at that man <laughs> That is a totally beautiful rock, man. <laughs> Whoa, huh? And so we are going to cut this so that... Oh, whoa. Huh? So that this play of color comes out. So that you guys can see it. And marvel and say, oh, whoa, there's Rick Carew with another damn opal that nobody can afford. <laughs> Shitsky, huh? <laughs> and so I have a collection of, of very, very fine opals. <laughs> in fact, maybe some of the finest opals in the world. And I'm poor as a church mouse. <laughs> I bought them on my social security money. <laughs> Less than a thousand dollars a month because I didn't always work over the table, as it were. <laughs> <clears throat> Look at the colors in that baby. I, and you know, the the patterns in these wood opals uh, from the growth of the trees and the way that the particles are replaced. Uh, the wood is replaced by kaolinite clay before it opalizes, right? So all that stuff predicates what the what the opal looks like the, the way the wood is and if i could focus my damn camera it would help um the uh, uh the way that those particles replace the wood is what causes these patterns here now the Opal, the color, comes from the stacking order of the opal as it forms, okay? So, so the, it's forming into little sub-microscopic spheres. The, each sphere is half the size of a wavelength of visible light. Hmm? As really small visible light is uh, 390 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Okay, so half of that, so uh, you know, close to 200 basically to um, 350, right? 350 is half of 700. Uh, so there, there's a, a range, the particle sizes in in precious opal, a very narrow range. Uh, they have to be, have to be. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It doesn't make play of color uh, if they're not within the, that parameter uh, of size. And the larger ones make red, and the smaller ones make blue, and everything in between is in that 150 nanometers of size. 
Now, now that's a diameter, so, uh, you know, uh, that's a big size jump uh, when you start multiplying times times uh, pi, times uh, pi r squared, right? Uh, r is half the distance, and squared is times itself. So, uh, times 3.14159, da 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 da, ad infinitum. Um, and that's how much it grows each time it gets a little bigger around because uh, it, it grows by this uh, uh, exponent of 3.14159 um, squared, right? So those spheres get bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller according to that uh, uh, logarithm. And it uh, forms around iron oxide, or in the case of black opal, iron sulfide. The kaolinite clay comes from volcanic ash, right? Volcanic ash comes from the east side of the on the island of Java and falls onto the west side. Uh, and there it is. This volcanic ash, if it weathers sufficiently, and it's the exact right size because each particle of clay becomes a particle, a sphere of silica when opalization takes place. So, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. The size of the clay particle is directly related to the size of the opal sphere that it becomes. Uh, they form one sphere at a time from each particle. And so there it is. The, the, uh, the acid hits the clay and it strips the aluminum oxide layer away and it leaves the silicone dioxide because silicone dioxide is the most stable combination on the planet. 73% of the planet is silica in one form or another. because there are no colors in this rock. It is black, or kind of black and clear, in between there, uh, between the black dark lines that are opaque, that's got woody stuff and, and pigment from the wood in between those spheres, okay? Uh, and, and I can leach those out if I want, but uh, I can't put them in. <laughs> And so the, uh, uh, and they do all kinds of amazing things. I can make them turn silver by polishing it the right way because there's so much iron sulfide in the environment that the clay that forms this black opal is completely saturated with iron sulfide. And that is what makes opal black not just the stuff in between here, but this stuff in the middle here, this black crystal that forms with the play of color, is, um, it actually has the iron sulfide inside the spheres bound to the silica. Uh, and that's pretty much new information. Other people don't know that because they don't know how opal really forms. Only me and Dr. Lynn Cram know how to do it. And uh, we're, I am.